Hey, welcome to the Dr. Kirsten Show. I'm your host, Dr. Kirsten Lauritsen. And today we are going to drive into, we're going to continue the conversation. Last week we talked about integration and why it's so important to have an integrated brain, a brain that is functioning well, not just from like a logical perspective, but we're also approaching life and uh, what we're experiencing with the emotional piece as well. We don't want to just be only in the emotional piece because that's just like chaos. I, you've, you've probably experienced this where something really big happened and then you just ended up in your emotions and it was just like like literal chaos. Um, whereas, I, and maybe you're also like, you know, just like people around you are just like getting uh, hosed with your emotions <laughs> or versus the other side where we're just stuck in sort of like the logical brain that is very, very rigid and forcing control on life and wanting to control everything. Um, maybe feeling like you have such a tight grip on like what you want um, and and uh, that's actually driving that thing further and farther away from you. Um, the, so if you didn't catch that uh, episode, I highly recommend going back and listening to that one. And then we're what we're going to talk about today is um, about brain plasticity. And I haven't decided yet. We'll see if it's going to include a lot around nervous system regulation or if we'll do that in next week's episode. But or the next episode, but um, okay, let's talk out, let's start out with brain plasticity. So um, actually, and even before that, I wanted to do a little, a little intro. So um, for those of you who don't know, my name is um, Dr. Kirsten Lauritsen. My degrees, uh, my first degree started out with psychology and neuroscience, and that's where we're going to do get a lot of this stuff today is we're going to go into a lot of the, the neuropsychology, um, so to speak. And, um, I also have, a, um, a few other degrees. I have a degree in Spanish. I have, um, a degree in, uh, human biology. I have a, my doctorate in chiropractic and a master's in human nutrition and functional medicine. So, and I think people get a little, um, they they don't they don't often know that chiropractors actually do a lot of um, work and training in neuroscience um, because the thing is is that you need to know how the nervous system functions and how the brain and nerves all interact with each other because you know you maybe you go to your chiropractor because you think well I've got low back pain and so that's what you know them for it's like they treat for pain well pain is in in all ways connected to what's going on in the brain. The brain has decided that something is going on. And so then it triggers the pain response. So you need to know how the brain, you know, interacts with a lot of these things. And in that process, you learn about a lot about all of the centers that, um, you know, control everything, including emotions and all that's all that jazz. Um, we're going to kick it back to my psychology and neuroscience degree in that time of my life. Um, and that is currently continuing to, I don't know, um, I keep coming back to it, let's say. So, you know, we're going to talk a lot about how the subconscious um, and rewiring and brain plasticity all, um, what it all means and how you can leverage it for success. Okay. So what is brain plasticity? Well, a long time ago, um, it used to be thought that the brain, you couldn't uh, create new cells in the brain. Like the brain kind of was stagnant after like 25-ish. And then that was, that was it. It was downhill from there. Well, um, neuroscience has found, um, and we've known this for a couple decades now, that that's actually not the case. The brain does have the opportunity and chance to change. It does have the the ability to lay down new neurons, uh, new cells, and uh, it has the capacity to grow and expand and continue learning as well as, um, yeah, rewiring. So what does that mean for you? Um, when, when we think about like, well, actually let me, let me give you an example first before I, before I do that. So, 
Um, a common one, and if you were following my Instagram over the last week, you probably learned a little bit about this, but matrescence, um, when, a mo- when a woman becomes a mom, a mother, there are a lot of things that have to change in order for her to um, be able to uh, take care of that kid. And it's really interesting. I, I talked to a lot of moms about this, but like it happens very fast, right? Like you go through some of it in pregnancy, but a lot of it happens after labor and babies here. And there is so much that shifts and changes. Um, and I think it causes a lot of women to to feel a little out of sorts. But it, but it's quite literally the process of the brain being able to both fit, like the body and the brain physically change. They cycle it psychologically changes as well as the, we see a lot of emotional changes. And these can be like a range of things. Like I, I dealt with a lot of this and worked through a lot of it during my pregnancy and um, postpartum. Whereas I think some some women don't always have the support around it, so they don't. Uh, they kind of get caught in it once it happens versus kind of proactively and, and actively working on it as it comes. Um, but I think, you know, I think a lot of people think a lot of women that I've worked with, at least around like weight loss, for example, think that they want to go back to that body before kids. Um, and there's like, I, there's a lot of, um, issues with that, right? Like the fact that, you've undergone such a big like rebirthing process there is no going back um so i think there's like a lot to unpack there and i think that also goes into a bit of like the identity identity shifts and things that happen through pregnancy that then um you know, if you don't address those things when they come up, they can kind of sneak up on you. And then, you know, you're, you're kind of having to untangle, like you're thinking you're just doing a weight loss program, but what you really need to do and what you're really doing is untangling all of the different like beliefs and emotions and things that go into that. And sometimes it's not just about the weight loss. Now it's about addressing that identity shift and the things that, that happened, uh, when you became a mom, there's a lot there, right? There's one little tiny topic of that. We could do a whole podcast just on that alone. But, you know, we also see it in there as well. We see, you know, grieving of that old life as well as identity shifts. Like we like women literally become um, a, an entirely new identity. Dads do as well. The women go through this um, in, in a bit of a different way because, I mean, that's it's it's part of the whole like physiology of how how um, how that all changes. Uh, and then also, I mean, there's there's things like um, the emotional roller coaster, right? That can tend to come along with that. So and I think we, I think a lot of people like put it up for like, oh, well, it's just because you're sleep deprived, and like, oh, it's just because of that. And I'm not saying that it's not necessarily because of that, but I think we we give it a lot of excuses because um, I think emotions make a lot of people really uncomfortable. So it's it tends to be explained away but then but then people wonder why do i have all of these health things like there's so many women that came have i've worked with in the past from like on the functional medicine side that have literally said like when i asked the question of when was the last time you felt well they tell me well it was before i got pregnant or before i had my kid or before i had my second kid or my third kid so it, you know, I think it's really important to just remember that like these times are really big times where the the brain is is really changing. And it's a good example of how the brain can change far, far later and far beyond when we used to think it was the end point to that, you know, it's the brain doesn't really do anything else <laughs> learning wise or growing wise from there. So but let's say you're you're not planning to become a mom or you um you know maybe maybe that's not right now or you know ever in your life or you're not a woman <laughs> um then there's lots of other ways that we can work on rewiring the brain 
but I'm going to kind of gear this around and kind of towards a, you know, like overwhelm and burnout type, you know, type. Um, but if you are an athlete, if you are someone who is a high performer in any, you know, shape way or shape or form, uh, this is, this is all things that you can apply to that. So, well, cause also, you know, I know many, many athletes who, and me included, who have gotten burned out and overwhelmed and also experience anxiety and issues with mental well-being. Like I, I've been there, um, you know, and then and this is a, a big part of why this is now a, a large part of what I do and why I do that, um, because I realized how much of my like chronic symptoms and my the cycles that I kept getting into around burnout and overwhelm uh, and anxiety, like all of those things were just symptoms of uh, what was going, what the deeper issues, which were going on in the subconscious mind, which you can rewire, <laughs> keep bringing it back to that. So, you know, I think at this point, what I, you know, what I've really realized is that like, you can't, um, that, you know, you can definitely do the, the protocols and programs and nutrition things and, and supplements and all that jazz, like all of that is really important and valid. And I include that in a lot of my programs, but and I don't think that you can just, uh, in many cases, I think the reason why people end up on these cycles over and over and over again, at least from my experience of working with clients over the last, I don't know, gosh, a decade, is that there's so much more going on behind the scenes that the subconscious mind is creating. And it very often goes back to its default patterns that it learned between the years of zero and eight years old like you are a literal sponge uh and your brain is taking in everything you are mirroring your parents you are mirroring your environment around you you are your environment you are um it's changing you like your internal state you are mirroring whatever that was so whatever your parents said whatever your teachers said your friends all of those situations and interactions build the subconscious mind and they are where we get the large majority of, of our beliefs it's also where we uh get experience really big emotions for the first time and we store all of those things and then that is ultimately what the brain kind of creates and projects as you grow up fascinating right I, I mean i think it's like the coolest thing the the it, so then as an adult what what ends up happening so so many times like i see health concerns now like chronic illnesses and conditions and things like that more as opportunities to learn and grow and learn whatever it is that life is wanting us to learn um and i'm see and i see it now as that then something that is happening to a person or to me uh it's more of um life giving me that as the as the opportunity to learn the new layer um and i like went through a ton of overwhelm and burnout i you know is especially during like my big kind of like iron man um when i was doing that a lot and the reason why i had to take a pretty significant break from it was because at that time I was also building my clinic um, and I had a lot going on there. I had really, really high expectations for myself in, in all of those. And I was putting more and more and more on my plate because I um, a lot of my self-worth was tied to my achievements and productivity. Uh, and I kept thinking and wanting to fill that void with more things um but the thing that you realize when you're in that is that more is never enough and it's um it's a it's a really kind of painful thing to go through but eventually uh event like you can get off of that cycle you can rewire your brain to not keep looking for the suffering and the struggle and you can find a lot more ease you know, also release a lot of the the like heavy weight baggage and you can you can feel very free. And it doesn't take that much to just get a 
a you know a decent amount of that and um i think a lo- another thing on this too is a, one of the reasons why we feel so much fatigue oftentimes along with all of that is because the nervous system is caught in this fight or flight cycle and it's using up a ton of resources in maintaining that right um and so when we clear a lot of those things, when we get back to the root of where a lot of those things are coming from, and what, what I'm referencing is literally going back to, you know, where the subconscious mind created that that belief and that that this now this problem is stemming from, uh, you, you first off, you change the default pattern, you rewire the brain, we learn and figure out how to integrate it into your life. And then not only do you get more energy because you're no longer putting all of that time and effort in and that um, you're not spending it on that problem, you can now redirect it into something that you do want. Awesome, right? Like, ugh, it's the coolest thing when you get to see it too, because, you know, you it, it essentially looks like having a session with a client and then um, working through whatever the the beliefs or clearing out emotions or how the brain has wired it all together getting them and and uh, figuring out what they want, figuring out what their brain wants, what it needs to learn. And then we um, get to see that shift literally happen in their life. And it is, it's just, it's rewarding work. It's, and it, it is just so neat to get to watch people literally transform before your eyes. So let's say that maybe, maybe motherhood isn't really in the, in the, in the, in your on your list right now or becoming a parent or maybe you are a parent so you've gone through a lot of that and now you're you're looking for other ways that you can rewire your brain well and especially if you're in the overwhelming burnout cycle um but if you're not here's some other things that you can do so you know becoming uh getting into triathlon and ironmans like i um i think it's funny because so many people think that i like wanted like I, I liked those things. Therefore I wanted to do that. (laughs) But in reality, like really what was happening is at the time I was like, man, I, I, it was an experiment really for myself, but I wanted to see what I was capable of and what I could do. And I, and the reality was too, is that like, I hated running. I hated it. I also was terrible swimmer. I kind of still am not very, I'm not fast. (laughs) That's for sure. But I have done an Ironman and I have swam for two miles. So like, you know, we, we made it through. <laughs> and then also um, the the last time that I had been on a bike was like a decade before that. Um, and mostly because I had fallen when I was in my teen years and just decided at that point that like, mm, I don't really need to ride a bike for a while, you know, and I'd had a, it was like, it was kind of a disaster. So it caused me a lot of anxiety in many ways to be on a bike. And, and so throughout that training, it took a lot of determination, number one, to get over the fear. Um, being on a triathlon bike is is kind of terrifying, um, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's they're very um it, when you're not used to them they they it takes a lot of learning to trust um and that was a big exercise for me in that as well as like I just hated running I didn't like it didn't like to do it and you know just really felt like it wasn't for me um so you know I think if you don't like those things it takes a lot of um, determination and, you know, there's, there's neuroscience out there that like when you do stuff like this, it increases and improves your willpower, right? Um, This is like the way that you can start to shift and change your brain and how it functions. So that's like one example of how you can do that. But if you are in fact in like the burnout and overwhelm cycle and maybe anxieties in there and all of those things, doing more and like going and like doing an Ironman may not necessarily or and or anything that's like really, really hard may not necessarily be the right thing for you right now. So how else can you shift and change your brain in order to be able to do that? Well, first off, it's really important to recognize like what are some of the signs that like there's more going on um, and that there's a root of the problem that we need to get to. Um, because, you know, I think along with burnout and overwhelm, we also usually see, like we talked about like inflammation, right? We see chronic health conditions, we see, um, fatigue, we see, uh, 
and ultimately, like, I think what ends up happening to you is we, we really are, are seeing a symptom of losing a connection with ourselves, with who we are, what we'd like to do, what we love to do. What a journey that is when you realize, like, I'm lacking joy in my day. Oof. That was one that hit me really hard about a year ago when I realized, number one, I didn't trust myself. And number two, I didn't really trust others. And on top of that, um, I lacked joy in my days. Mm. Right? Like where I and and fulfillment. Like, yes, I get a lot of fulfillment from my from what I do and how I work with clients and the impact and all of that. But there's also more to me than my job and my career, right? And I think that's one of the things that can be really hard as a high achieving person is that a lot of that achievement is where somewhere along the line, we probably learn that that's where we get the things that we want um, from the people around us is like, when I get good grades or when I, um, you know, do well at piano or when I am, you know, really good on, on the volleyball court or any number of those things, um, that's where I get praise, right? That's where I get love. It's where I get the things that I want. Um, so you, your, your brain connects those things and then you start stacking the achievements on top of each other. But ultimately, the the issue with that is when you've lost that connection with what you actually love to do, you start down a cycle where um, it becomes a lot and all about your career or it becomes, um, you know, and maybe you have achieved a lot, but there's still that gap that like something's very clearly off and something's very clearly missing. And I've had so many clients, you know, who have gone through therapy, who have gone through and read all the self-help books and have done all of the things and still haven't found the answers for what they they need. And part of that is because there's a there's a whole comprehensive and holistic way of looking at this as, as the problem, but you got to get to the root of where a lot of it came from and where it's all stemming from and how the brain has wired all of it together because that it, it it includes both the beliefs, but it also includes the emotions that the brain has linked and tied together. So you've got to get the web of and then and then on top of that, there's usually a lot of layers. Um, so you know that's that's one really um I think good example of it. Also, you know, we we also I also tend to find that when people are experiencing this too, they're they're kind of living in a state of reactivity, like they're reacting to their life and the things that are happening around them versus being able to integrate what they want, what they need, um, what what makes them happy? What do they what do they want to do? Um, and 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 what are how are they feeling about any and all of it? What are their emotions and acknowledging those and then incorporating all of that into making empowered decisions, decisions that they uh, that they get to choose versus feeling like you're constantly in reaction to everything that's happening in your life. These are also, you know, I think to really, you know, when we're when we're in that reactive state, it's a it's a good example of how our nervous system is uh, in oftentimes fight or flight. There's things that are happening, and we oftentimes can't see the solutions. We can't create solutions to the problem, oftentimes because in the sympathetic nervous system, we lack creativity. We lack the ability to heal. Like it's really hard to heal when your body is constantly wanting to run from a lion really hard to do that because like it's not going to do that it's going to take all the muscle and shunt it out to your muscles in order to be able to run from the threat but that also means then that like you're you're that also when that happens we oftentimes have um we don't want to reproduce right if we're going to be running from a lion this is one of the reasons why so many women and people feel like they have a low libido like they don't want to have sex because your brain is like no now is not the time for that. And then we're looking at hormones and we're putting so much into, um, you know, oh, it must be, must be hormones. It must be my gut. It must be all of these things. Uh, and maybe that works and maybe it doesn't. But if it doesn't, it's 
potentially coming because your nervous system is dysregulated because you're spending so much of your day and your time in fight or flight and in that sympathetic nervous system. <laughs> so what do we need to do? We need balance. We need to learn that work and rest balance. We need to learn that softness to get into that flow, to get into that state of adaptability and flexibility of not needing to be so rigid and forcing control on everything but also not needing and wanting to be in chaos where we're just like experiencing big emotions or just letting them take over because we don't have any tools in order to be able to like address those emotions and work through them we need that integration of both sides of the brain so i think what we'll do next week or next episode is we will talk a bit more about nervous system regulation and what that means and about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system and we'll really dive into those uh but what I really want you to take away from this episode specifically is that if you are experiencing any of the number of things that we've talked about here, um, and if you have been experiencing like chronic health conditions and you've tried all the things, if you've tried all the things for burnout and overwhelm and anxiety and uh, if you if you are in that, um, it's possible that one of the reasons why nothing else has worked or it's maybe gotten you to a certain point, but there's still more to go and you're missing what that piece looks like is that the, the root where the subconscious is then creating that um, picture of what's going on up there uh, that hasn't been addressed. We, you you might hear things like, um, your, your subconscious mind is literally projecting what it's perceiving. So it's creating what it has programmed. So this could look like, um, scarcity. It can look like, uh, you know, maybe not believing that you are worth it, that you are deserving. Maybe this looks like, um, that you, uh, feel like, anything that you do is never enough. This could look like, um, maybe, maybe at some point you got sick as a kid and something happened or someone said something. And now your brain believes that like, you're always going to be unhealthy or that like health isn't for you, or you're never going to find the solution or you're never going to get better. Nothing ever works for me. All of these are different beliefs and patterns and programming that can be in the brain that then gets projected into the brain literally creates them. And then that can be what creates the physical in body manifestation of what's going on up there, like a lack of connection to self, to self, like I mentioned, Thing about that is like if you don't trust yourself or you don't feel safe inside of your own body that's going to be a really hard thing to heal through no matter how many protocols you take and supplements you take and all of that so this is where i really believe that what we what we have going on in the subconscious mind and you could call this mindset if you wanted um, but what we have going on up there is ultimately what needs to come alongside everything else that we are doing to improve our lives to grow to get better improve performance and all that jazz so um yeah, brain plasticity, rewiring the brain. It's all possible and you can do it at any time and throughout your entire life, which is really, really cool. Um, so I hope that this episode brought up some fun things for you. I'm going to be launching a new um, group program through this uh, that I'll be walking you through the steps in this. So if you are interested in that, reach out to me. Either get in touch with me over social media or over email. Uh, and I would love to have you as a part of that program and it will be the beta launch of it. So, um, typically with beta launches, you get a lot of support, uh, as well as, um, you get to walk through it in the way that, you know, um, you get to influence part of how that happens because it's based a lot on you and on what you need and how you're going through the program. And then of course, too, because of that, usually there's a, there's a, um, a, a lower cost to it as well. So you can get a lot for less, I would say. Um, so if that's you, I would definitely reach out and let me know you're, if you're interested. 
And um, if you have any questions that have come up because of this episode and things that you would like to like me to, you know, expand on, um, you can either write those in the comments here or you can come find me on Instagram or email me and I would love to dive into those more. So brain plasticity, brain rewiring, you can literally change your brain and change your programming. Um, and so um, actually here, let me add in a takeaway. One thing that you can do, uh, so yes, do something that you really don't like to do and that you also find hard. Uh, so again, like if you hate running, maybe that's go and sign up literally for a half Ironman or a half uh, marathon and a, or a marathon and force yourself to start training, um, force yourself get essentially like do that, you know, to get the determination, um, to, to do that, get the motivation to do it. You have to do it. If you sign up, then you got to do it. Right. Um, but if putting more on your plate is not necessarily what would be the best for you, like you are in that overall burnout cycle and you're in fight or flight, I would say the best thing that you can do would be to, um, start, it's going to seem so simple and maybe you have already done this before, but I would recommend auditing your life, audit your life for the triggers. What makes you start feeling the way that you're feeling? What are the things that you are responding to out, out of reaction, reactivity versus standing in your own power? What are, um, you know, if you can like audit your life that way, where are areas where you are lacking joy? This doesn't necessarily need to look like you're happy all the time and excited all the time, but like, where are you, where are you lacking joy? Where are you having a disconnect in your relationship to yourself? Maybe in your significant other with your partner in that relationship. What about in your relationship with your kids? What about the environment that you work in? How are you reacting to and functioning in and with all of those things? So auditing your life can be something that can be very eye-opening and really give you a good look at where some of the problems are, are, are stemming or at least symptoms of where there are there's opportunity to look into it more. Um, and then if you want to learn breath work, if you want to learn parasympathetic nervous system tools that actually activate your parasympathetic nervous system so that you can get out of fight or flight first and start to get that peace, that calm, and then be able to actually get your body to do the other things that you want it to do and rewire your brain and all of those things, um, then send me a message because I'd love to, I, I also do this with my private coaching clients as well. But, um, you know, if you want to get in on that group or uh, any of my other programs, let me know. Okay. I will see you next time. And we will talk about more about the nervous system and what nervous system regulation means. All right. See you then.